February 21st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 8 from the New Testament. Sometime afterward, he went on through towns and villages, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and disabilities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's household manager, Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their own resources. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from one town after another, he spoke to them in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled on, and the wild birds devoured it. Other seed fell on rock, and when it came up, it withered, because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, and they grew up with it and choked it. But other seed fell on good soil and grew, and it produced a hundred times as much grain. As he said this, he called out, The one who has ears to hear had better listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, You have been given the opportunity to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that although they see, they may not see, and although they hear, they may not understand. Now the parable means this, the seed is the word of God. Those along the paths are the ones who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in a time of testing, fall away. As for the seed that fell among thorns, these are the ones who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the worries and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for the seed that landed on good soil, these are the ones who, after hearing the word, cling to it with an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with steadfast endurance. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in can see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, and nothing concealed that will not be made known and brought to light. So listen carefully, for whoever has will be given more, but whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has will be taken from him. Now Jesus' mother and his brothers came to him, but they could not get near him because of the crowd. So he was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. But he replied to them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. One day Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and said to them, Let's go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they sailed, he fell asleep. Now a violent windstorm came down on the lake, and the boat started filling up with water, and they were in danger. They came and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are about to die. So he got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They died down, and it was calm. Then he said to them, Where is your faith? But they were afraid and amazed, saying to one another, Who then is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. So they sailed over to the region of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As Jesus stepped ashore, a certain man from the town met him who was possessed by demons. For a long time this man had worn no clothes and had not lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and shouted with a loud voice, Leave me alone, Jesus, Son of the Most High God. I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had started commanding the evil spirit to come out of the man. For it had seized him many times, so he would be bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard. But he would break the restraints and be driven by the demon into deserted places. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. And they began to beg him not to order them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and the demonic spirits begged Jesus to let them go into them. He gave them permission. So the demons came out of the man and went into the pigs, and the herd of pigs rushed down the steep slope into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they ran off and spread the news in the town and countryside. 
So the people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus. They found the man from whom the demons had gone out sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the man who had been demon-possessed had been healed. Then all the people of the Gerasenes and the surrounding region asked Jesus to leave them alone, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare what God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole town what Jesus had done for him. Now when Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed him, because they were all waiting for him. Then a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, came up, falling at Jesus' feet. He pleaded with him to come to his house, because he had only one daughter, about twelve years old, and she was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowd pressed around him. Now a woman was there, who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for twelve years, but could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind Jesus and touched the edge of his cloak, and at once the bleeding stopped. Then Jesus asked, Who was it who touched me? When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds are surrounding you and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I know that power has gone out from me. When the woman saw that she could not escape notice, she came trembling and fell down before him. In the presence of all the people, she explained why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone from the synagogue ruler's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher any longer. But when Jesus heard this, he told them, Do not be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed. Now when he came to the house, Jesus did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, and James and the child's father and mother. Now they were all wailing and mourning for her, but he said, Stop your weeping. She is not dead, but asleep. And they began to make fun of him, because they knew that she was dead. But Jesus gently took her by the hand and said, Child, get up. Her spirit returned, and she got up immediately. Then he told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them to tell no one what had happened. God, I think I could read your word a million times and still learn new things out of it. I have no doubt. So even though I've heard the parable of the sower probably a million times, today something else caught my, my attention or caught my heart. Where it says in verse 6, Other seed fell on rock, and when it came up, it withered because it had no moisture. And I know that that's supposed to be that we don't have, if we don't have roots in our faith and we're on a rock and we can just shrivel up and die. But I also think part of that too, part of that parable has to do with it withered because it had no moisture. And instantly I thought about all the pain experiences we deal with here on this world. So many tears, so much heartbreak. I think back the last 14 months of my life, and I think I've cried more in those last 14 months than I have my entire life all put together. I think if we don't have the moisture, if we don't have the tears from those heartbreaking emotion parts, and if we don't learn how to depend on you and be obedient to you through those situations, then we do wither up and die. How can we have faith if we don't rely on you at all times? Giving up our independence and our dependence upon ourselves to be completely dependent upon you, God, is truly difficult for us. We're selfish and egotistical. We think most of the ways we get things done seem to work out okay, so what's the big deal? Yet my heart, even when, even when tears are flowing from my eyes, from heartbreak, from sadness, from anger, from frustration, 
I also know in those moments to praise you because our relationship is going to get stronger. I'm going to learn more about being dependent upon you. I'm going to be able to grow through that moisture, just like the seed you talk about in today's parable. That even if I feel like I am literally thrown across a rock and it's jutting into my back and making things painful, that I'm still going to survive what you're putting me through. And if for some reason your will is for me to not survive what, what is actually happening to me or happening to someone else, then that's okay too because that means that I'm simply going to be in heaven where I want to be more than anything in this world. So the next time we hear that parable so many layers to it God the next time let us be really intentional about the moisture part that without the pain without those struggles without understanding that those things have to happen in this world for you to be glorified that those are the moments where our roots go deep into our relationship with you those are the moments where we grow roots and our faith can't be shattered or blown away or destroyed I can guarantee that I felt like I was going to be destroyed <laughs> at moments during the last 14 months. I can pinpoint exact times where I not only didn't think I could go on, but I didn't want to go on. And I know you know this because we have these conversations almost daily. <laughs> But I also know that no matter what those situations are, that our relationship, that my relationship with you, God, has become incredibly deeper and stronger and more passionate in these last 14 months. God, I pray for everyone listening right now, that if they have moisture in their life right now, that if tears are falling from their from their eyes and their heart is shattered, that you will just hold them so close, wrap them in your arms and hold them so, t cl so close and allow that relationship with you to grow deeper and stronger, that those roots of their seed, of their faith, will be deep. God, I praise you in the storm. Ah, that's a great song. I do praise you in the storm. I do know you have big plans, and without the storms, it would be a little bit hard to glorify you to the length that we should. I know you have a plan for everything. And today, I thank you for the blessing of the moisture that comes from broken hearts. In your son's name I pray, amen.